sometimes you find something in a video game that makes you think, you know, let's go with something a little lighter, only to find something else that makes you think, maybe I could find something on the phone instead. This is why they were diving into 10 shocking easter eggs and discoveries in kids games that were never meant to be found. Part 3 Brought to you by Age of Origins, where you can fend off ways of zombies in the free-to-play tower defense strategy game, as you create the most powerful zombie defense empire imaginable, which fortunately, as far as I can tell, doesn't seem to have any traumatizing easter eggs. Get a head start and use the link down below to enjoy $60 free worth of gifts today. I can say it's definitely a more pleasant experience than this. Jumpstart Baby Thanks to Kenzo for submitting this on OnHeader.com. Jumpstart is the popular franchise of educational computer and console games for children, teaching kids basic math and reading skills with fun mini-games, the youngest of which is 1998's Jumpstart Baby, where a talking teddy bear helps teach infants nursery rhymes, the names of objects and colors, and how to count to three. Say hello to the sun! Oh, so cute. What's not cute is a rather unsettling discovery Ice Clan Gaming on Twitter found in the files of the game, as they found an extremely confusing graphic with the words DEFCON for the Elisa file. While I have no idea who the hell Elisa is, DEFCON refers to a real-life alert system used by the US military rate on a scale of 1 through 5, with 5 being the lowest and 1 being nuclear war is imminent. What exactly is this teddy bear's objective? We're gonna need Elisa to give us an answer here. If someone's trying to make us shit ourselves or thought impending nuclear warfare in a jumpstart game, relaying that message to babies who already shit themselves seems like a rather ineffective way of getting the message out. Someone please find Elisa quick. Wallace and Gromit's Grand Adventures Wallace and Gromit are two iconic children's characters from the UK known for their claymated features, and also one of my personal childhood favorites. They're the ultimate wholesome duo and considered extremely positive images for kids, who returned in 2009 for Telltale Games' episodic Grand Adventures, where clothes inventor Wallace and his silent dog Gromit once again save their town from numerous problems that they usually started. Though Gromit tends to do all the heavy lifting, while Wallace remains fairly oblivious and naive to everything around him, which is why it was especially surprising when players going through the files of Episode 3 Muzzle found what appeared to be outtakes of Wallace's voice actor in the game Ben Whitehead delivering some especially out-of-character lines as Wallace. You really ate all of these pies? You fat bastard! I'm gonna whoop his ass. Perhaps I should have reconsidered those uh, les le Leslie li those lesbians. <laughs> at the fair this weekend. What the f weekend? What am I talking about? Why these voice lines remain in the files isn't entirely clear, as it could be part of an unfound easter egg in episode 3 of the game, or it was just slipped in here because the developers were having a laugh. Gotta say though, after hearing lines like this, I don't think I'm ever gonna be able to look at walls the same way again. Yeah, I'll have a break later with a nice cup of tea and some toast and crank. Paper Mario, the Origami King. Paper Mario The Origami King is the sixth game in the Paper Mario series, released exclusively on Nintendo Switch in 2020 where Mario sets out to prevent the Mushroom Kingdom from turning into origami. The game for the most part was considered a rather typical installment for the popular series, though many fans were surprised after noticing something about a particular collectible, as if you were to enter Luigi's suite on the second floor of the Shroom City Hotel. You could find a chest next to a bed that when opened gives you a treasure modeled after one of the towers in the desert. Players were quick to note after finding this treasure that the object actually appeared to look rather fast with its mushroom top head and rather fleshy color, especially emphasized when turning it on its side. Okay, yeah, when you turn it like that. It also didn't help that the description said that it was modeled after a legendary king. Yeah, legendary for toads. And if you're still not convinced of this, well, then look at the item number. There's no way that's a coincidence. That's definitely a Why was this locked away in Luigi's room again? Mary Kate and Ashley, Winner's Circle. Thanks to Robert for submitting the discovery on oddhunter.com. Mary Kate and Ashley Winner's Circle is a game designed for preteen horse girls, released in 2001 for the original PlayStation. In the game, players care for horses and compete in equestrian competitions, unfortunately made horribly difficult by the game's sensitive controls. In 2015, Lazy Game Reviews on YouTube was playing the game with fellow YouTuber Pushing Up Roses, when they noticed something strange written on the shirt of an NPC watching the horse competition. Wait, his, his shirt says GW sucks. George, George W. Is it a is it a political like symbol? They noted that GW sucks most likely referred to former U.S. President George W. Bush, who at the time of the game's release had just taken office despite losing the popular vote. Which certainly explains why someone would be pissed at George Bush at the time, though it doesn't really explain what they thought they were accomplishing by hiding such a message in the Mary Kate and Ashley game. As LGR pointed out, this text would have been impossible to be seen on CRT monitors back when this game came out, making it all the more meaningless why the developer decided to hide their distaste for Bush in a game made for preteen girls. It's not as 
as though anyone was playing on playing Mary Kate and Ashley Winter Circle decades later in high definition. Um, then again, I guess that is what we're doing right now. But I mean, come on, look at that horse's majestic form. Who knows? Maybe Mary Kate and Ashley was an unassuming enough franchise for the developers to get away with a whole mess of shocking discoveries that still haven't been found years later. Oh, jeez. This means I'm gonna have to play more Mary Kate and Ashley games now, doesn't it? Oh, f there's nine of them. Somebody help me. Talking Angela. Thanks to Optimism for submitting this on the Onheader Discord. 2012's Talking Angela is one of many titles in the Talking Tom and Friends franchise, a series of virtual pet mobile games and chatbots designed for children that's even spawned a popular TV show. Talking Angela in particular has gone through a number of interesting changes since release, mostly after falling victim to parental hysteria in 2014, who believed that Chatterbot had ulterior motives that were later debunked, which is maybe why Angela's dress was added after 2017. Of course, there's nothing actually shocking about an unclothed cat, so if her dress was added to quell overly concerned parents, then they definitely wouldn't have wanted to see this. As originally when the game had a text chat feature and you typed who is an idiot, Angela would strangely choose to randomly swear at you. I choose nut. I select hand. I select queen. I picked under I choose slicker. I choose I choose hole. I choose I select I select bagger. It's hard to say what exactly is happening here, but we could maybe give the developers a pass and assume that it wasn't intentional, as the game could either be randomly generating swear words or possibly accidentally repeating some sort of swear word filter. As I don't know how you get insults like not in its head unless the developers are being especially creative. At the same time, it doesn't seem to be an accident that there's two audio files in the game called Pokas 4 and Pokas 8. 4 and 8? Where's the rest of the Pokas? Guess that means when you tap on where Angela's sitting, she snaps back at you. It's apparently for a lot more than just touching her tail. Guess that means those parents were onto something after all. Little Big Planet. Thanks to Mysterious Cube for submitting this through the Onheader Discord. Little Big Planet continues to be a series that won't escape this channel. As we covered the series several times last year for a number of discoveries mainly uncovered from old builds by Mysterious Cube, such as this horrifying bleeding eyed cow thing, or this mysterious image of a bloody man. And now we have another set of images that in no way belong anywhere near a game meant for kids. As Mysterious Cube showed me in April of last year, he obtained a unique version of the original Little Big Planet, referred to as the Deploy build that was actually dated after the original game's release that was used exclusively for the Tokyo Game Show in 2009 to show off the upcoming PlayStation Move functionality. Although the build was created to only boot into one demonstration level, the build can actually be hacked to access 2,000 other levels, as well as access to a gold mine of cut Little Big Planet 1 and pre-alpha Little Big Planet 2 material. But among the abundance of content Little Big Planet can be found, uh, this image. And in case you think your eyes are deceiving you, they're not. And if you're thinking this just accidentally ended up in the data and wasn't ever actually considered for use in the game, this is footage of the developers at a Game City conference in 2008. In addition to that, there was even an image of the Confederate flag in the same folder that even showed up on a concept art render as an actual selectable level, which I'm guessing would have been placed right next to the Japanese softcore porn level. For a kid's game, that just seems like a lot of new information to introduce kids to all at once. Scrap Mechanic Thanks to Joe Train Gamer for submitting this discovery on the Onheader Discord. 2016 Scrap Mechanic is a sandbox game by Switch developer Axelot Games that allows players to practice their engineering skills creating custom buildings, vehicles, and machines. It's a game considered by all appearances to be great for children, with one parent on Reddit saying the most inappropriate thing about Scrap Mechanic is a toilet. But of course, they're wrong, which you probably gathered since I'm talking about it right now. As data miner Dark Frog on the Scrap Mechanic leaking website SM Leaks found that in the date of the game is a final name ENV Man Made Hang.mesh, which when open reveals a model of a character being hung. Damn, that's the last thing I expect in a game like this. The model never makes an appearance in the game and begs the question why such a dark render would be in the files of such a wholesome game in the first place. The game does have a survival mode where players crash land in the environment from a spaceship and must scavenge for food and supplies while fighting hostile robots. Though no player has reported survival mode getting dire enough for a character to do this. Maybe it's just an unfinished model for something not as sinister like a game of Hangman? Yeah, let's go with that idea. I mean, let's hope. Holy hell. Yeah, I'm pretty convinced the toilet's far from the worst thing in this game. Kingdom Hearts 2. Thanks to Caleb Pryor for submitting this discovery on OddHeader.com. Kingdom Hearts 2, released in 2005 exclusively on the PlayStation 2, is the third installment in Square Enix's popular action RPG series, following Chain of Memories on the Game Boy Advance. The game is considered by many to be one of the best RPGs of all time, receiving a final mixed version with additional content in 2007, which was released again in 2017 on PS4 and again on Xbox One, Windows, and Switch. However, back when playing the very first original release on PlayStation 2 as a child, Caleb was shocked to make an unusual discovery at the end of the game before the 
the point of no return, as by angling the camera underneath Kyrie's skirt, Caleb was surprised to see that she was wearing white underwear, which the developers went as far to decorate with lace around the edges and a little red bow in the front. Even more surprising, this wasn't even the first time underwear like this had been discovered in the franchise, as at the beginning of the first game on Destiny Islands, you could also see Selfie's underwear if you stood below her while she's sitting on the dock. It might not come as a surprise to learn that both of these discoveries underneath these skirts were removed from all the many re-releases of the game, as now when you move the camera underneath their skirts, there's nothing there at all, which maybe looks a little odd, but is much more typical what the under region of the skirt normally looks like in a video game, as if a character never changes their clothes, like these two don't, it wouldn't make any sense to render anything underneath their clothes that doesn't serve any purpose to the game, which begs a question if there was a purpose to what these characters were wearing underneath their clothes. My guess is probably not. Considering this is a game with Mickey Mouse and Disney's heavy involvement from the beginning, I can't imagine there being a removed non-Disney moment cut during the development or anything still hidden in the game. More likely scenario seems the developer at Square maybe got a little too carried away focusing on the details of these characters' certain particulars, and inadvertently ended up changing curious boys' lives like Caleb forever. The Page Master. Thanks to Espio for submitting this discovery on the Odd Header Discord. The Page Master is a tie-in to the 1994 movie starring Macaulay Culkin, a half-animated, half-live-action flick where a boy trapped in a library has to journey through works of classic literature in order to find his way home. The movie actually had two separate tie-in games of the same name that were actually quite different, one being a point-and-click adventure for the PC and the other being a platformer that was released for the Game Boy, Sega Genesis, and Super Nintendo. However, certain versions of the game have quite significant differences from the others, such as in a prototype of the Super Nintendo version video game hacker Nelson Du Bois was messing around with his action replay, when suddenly he was met with a strange error screen that read F*** you fucker. There's been some pretty unique swears in this video so far. It's unclear why this error message is so needlessly hostile, but it might have something to do with the Page Master being one of the first games to ever release at the same time as the movie's theatrical run, a task that was considered near impossible to do in 1994 and likely contributed to taxing development. Evidence of this seems to also exist in the Game Boy version of the game, as at the start of the game if you input up, down, right, left, down, up, left, right, Right. An extra menu option called Cheat Flags will appear, which gives you basic cheats like infinite lives and level select. However, if you activate the Cheat Flag menu, then press down, down, right, up, left, left, down, right, and then up, up, left, down, right, right, up, left. Then for some reason during the Falling Objects minigame, Macaulay Culkin turns into a giant d*** and the objects turn into the face of the head of the company at the time. And my friend Slippy Slice confirmed this one made it into the release version of the game. Damn, I know production was probably rough on this, but whoever managed to slip this into a major children's movie property must have had balls as big as the one I've seen on screen right now. Barney's Hide and Seek Thanks to Keeler the Fox for submitting this discovery on oddheader.com. Barney's Hide and Seek is a 1993 platformer starring the infamous purple dinosaur that every preschooler in the 90s had to watch and every parent had to suffer through. It's a pretty simplistic game where the player helps Barney find some kids and presents scattered throughout four levels. The game's even received renewed interest in recent years with speedrunners, who found that due to the game's autoplay feature that kicks in at the player to remain idle, Barney can actually beat the game himself without anyone pressing a button, but takes different amounts of time due to several randomized elements, meaning one speedrunner holds the record for just sitting there and doing nothing. Barney's Hide and Seek is of course so innocent without any rough edges that unlike a traditional platform, it's impossible to make Barney die, though it's perfectly in line with the cute and cuddly world that Barney lives in. For example, if the player were to try to make Barney move off the platform when he wouldn't be able to make the jump, Barney would instead stay put and give the player a lecture about safety. What the hell kind of game is this? Barney, you're really killing any fun we could have had right now. Kilo the Fox must have been thinking the same thing, as when they played the game as a child, they managed to discover something that made Barney do the unthinkable. As during the last part of the game, when Barney must make the jump from a cliff from across some water by walking Barney to the edge of the cliff just enough to make the jump, which my friend Slippy Slides confirmed is the precise location down to the exact pixel. Then waiting long enough for the autoplay to kick in, Barney merrily jumps to his death. We got him! Try to lecture us now! Barney then appears alive and well back at the top of the cliff and the number of collectibles you scored throughout the level actually diminished, which appears to indicate that Barney's hide and seek was originally designed with normal game over mechanics, but at some point in development his kid proved down to the impossible to die kid friendly goody two shoes version. It also also seems to me Kilo the Fox managed to find the only remaining instance of being able to kill Barney in the game, finally fulfilling millions of parents' wishes and solidifying what is surely the greatest discovery ever made in an official Barney title. Kalo reports that even to this day, his parents celebrate him being able to kill the purple dinosaur, which practically brings a tear to my eye. A truly moving story as who could imagine a better way to make a parent more proud. 
and thanks again to Age of Origins for sponsoring this video. Age of Origins is a fun tower defense mobile game with a lot of interesting twists, such as the cool ability to recruit special officers that can train the rest of your troops and increase their effectiveness on the battlefield. You can pick from director, strategy, warfare, and drill masters, and even treat this really cool infected character named Lucy, whose special power is controlling biochemical zombie troops. There's also these really awesome characters Genshin and Empress who absolutely destroy on the battlefield with their special unique abilities. You'll also be able to zoom out and see your progress on the world map alongside several other player cities across the globe, make alliances, and team up with these players for large cooperative worldwide battles with hundreds of other players in real time. That is, before it's too late. Give the game a go for free today with the download link down below and get an exclusive $60 worth for your gifts. Let's go kill some zombies. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe. And if you know of any other shocking easter eggs or discoveries in kids games that you think I should cover, submit through oddheader.com, come join the discord, or even send me a shout out through twitter or reddit. And thanks again to Slippy Slides for helping get the footage for this video. Feel free to subscribe to him down below as well. Shout out to Alexander Knight, Angel the Fox, Ash Photography, Andrew FM, Chad Biscuit, Dear Mid Crowley, Flex, Grow Ups, Ed Moffat, Eddie Talkspin the Bleach Primid, Fox M Cloud 123, Leo Maurer, Miss Arctic Foxy, Rackman 22, Riley S, Robert Eisenman, Scaredies, Starcore 2, Sneaking J, Taryn Stock, Towerizer, Vincent, and Jan Baneer for their Patreon support. Stay tuned.